I play Katie Frank. She's an elementary school teacher. She teaches a class of sixth graders. One of those sixth graders being her young son she had as a teenager, so a very young single mom. Um, she's also in a custody battle with the father's parents, so definitely dealing with some drama at home. Um, she comes into the school with the kids, and the virus starts the outbreak, actually starts at that hospital, so they end up being quarantined in that hospital. So she's got parents on the phone, she's got in-laws who are, you know, a little, a little much. <laughs> Trying to keep the cool, to make sure all of the students feel safe. So she's uh, she's got a lot of weight, but she has to definitely be the protector. And she becomes kind of an unlikely hero, and there may be a beautiful relationship blossom with Jake. We don't know how that's going to go, but there's something there. There's a spark. You said taking them into school, but you meant the hospital, right? That's Did I say hot school? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, they're all <laughs> linked somehow. Um, yeah, they actually go to sing for some, some sick people, which is great because I actually do that in real life. So it's funny how I work with kids and we go and sing for, you know, seniors' homes and stuff. So it's funny when I got that in the script. I was like, oh, like, I'm going to make it work. Really. But yeah. Pardon? It was a sign. It was divine. It was a sign, yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm in the right place. This is good. She's kind of in a unique situation where not only is she worried about her own son, but she also has these students that she has to be concerned about. Yes. Um, so when the quarantine goes up, or the containment, um, will she be able to balance, do you think, the, those responsibilities, or will her love for her son kind of be paramount? Meaning, do you, would you think she kind of favor the son over the other kids type yeah, of thing? Yeah, like, will she, where, where's her response? Responsibility. The one thing I love about Katie is, I think, if she protected every child in the world, it still wouldn't be enough. She's, you know, been through some abuse in her past relationships. So I think I think she's got a love for kids that's so massive that I think every child is extremely important to her. Of course, there's going to be an instinct as a mother to really protect your child. I don't know how that's going to you know go, but what I do love about her is she's just got such a beautiful sense of love and morality that I think every kid is important. You know, I don't think she would put him above, but yes, there would be an instinct there for sure to to look to him first because when she finds out um, that we have to go back into the hospital and the pilot's in the trailer, there's a moment where she's like, Quentin, you stay with me. So yeah. How, how hands-on has Judy Fleck been with the pilot? Big time hands-on. She's such a creative genius. She's just, she just knows how to tell a story and she knows how to develop a character and I love how she writes women. It's so, so refreshing to have women with broken hearts and women who've, who've risen up over, over, you know, the trials and tribulations Life and vulnerable women who are strong. Um, so she's completely hands on. She sat down with us and talked about our, our potential arc, what her background was. Um, she was on set every day, always, you know, her and David having their little corner chats and then coming over to you and giving you notes, which was wonderful. Um, so she's, yeah, completely hands on and also just such a fun person to be around. So she's like balances work and, you know, play really well. I think she's fabulous. And how did you have handle the, the sort of infected we see a few of them is it kind of strange walking around set and oh. like the actors that are it, dressed in makeup it's whatever? definitely a shock it's actually funny because um, one of the actors who plays Re Dr. Rita Sanders who's the first victim you see in the trailer she's one of my best friends in real life we're, oh. we're both Canadian we're in the same acting class and so we both auditioned for this throughout the process and then eventually she got that part so it was really funny so she's like a stunning model and all of a sudden you walk out she walks in and it's like blood and you're like you're still beautiful when you're sick however you, you're, I just I, mean, I can't look at you for very long I'm just gonna you know, talk to you from the side but yeah it's it's definitely scary the makeup team was incredible and they made it look so realistic so what yeah. do you go to when you see something like that because some people will go to the humor and try to make fun of it or right some people will just try to avoid it at all what's your process in dealing with with that aspect of it, like the, the horror of it. The horror. I think it's a little bit of both. There's definitely, 
you know, it's comedic because you you have you have the difference between actually being on set and knowing it's all fictitious. But the minute you you check in, it definitely takes over. I found the day, the riot scene day. Um, I walked on the set and I was overtaken with emotion. It was really hard to see the people who were not only sick but like their bodies burning in the street and people fighting for food. And to me, it did something to me that just like killed my heart. So it's, it's definitely it's not draining, but it's like it hits you. It hits you here. Yeah. How do you think you'd handle containment? Being being contained yeah. in a small space, I get I get a little a little stir crazy. Definitely, I like the sun. I like being outside. That's why I live in LA. So being in like gray walls for a long time could be could do some talking to myself probably eventually. Could go a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a media like? Did you and Chris you play off each other so well in the pilot? Was that immediate or is that something that kind of grew throughout the filming? Um, Chris is Chris is so warm and loving. He's such a generous actor. We were friends right off the bat. Um, the chemi the chemistry grew. Yeah, over time, the more you get to know somebody, it, it will always grow. You'll connect a little further if you learn something about them. But it was quite immediate. Yeah, yeah, we get along really well. Really cheer for you and Jake's hair. Oh, really? Thank you. By the end of the episode, I think I think what's beautiful about them, Jake and Katie, is they're both so like they're sad. They have sadness, but they also are like big, big, open, loving hearts. So I think it's two people you wouldn't actually normally see necessarily together, but in this situation, they come together on, in, a, in an unlikely circumstance. So I really, I really love their their relationship. Yeah. What can fans expect from upcoming after the pilot? What do you know? I don't know anything. They, they won't give us. They won't give us anything. It's zipped lips. So when I find out, you'll yeah. You'll... All right. Then for people who haven't seen, what can fans expect from the pilot? Okay, fans can expect. It's it's scary as heck. Blood, guts. Um, it's just definitely very sus uh, suspenseful. But what I love about it is it's really all about love and relationships. And every different relationship is so beautiful and unique. And every storyline is unique. So you're getting so many different, um, so many different human experiences. So it's really it's scary and yes, it's dark at times. But it's so lightened up by the warmth and the love and the connections between the characters. Do the kids get scared? Oh yeah, for sure. Eventually, eventually they will. But right now they're oblivious. They're playing their games. Yeah. 